A lot of people struggle with hitting cross court forehands. And there's one thing that if you don't master essentially, and it's very, very easy, uh, you're going to keep dragging the ball wide when you, you know, try and hit a winner, try and hit a cross court angle, go anywhere close to the line, drive it wide, or maybe that's just where you happen to miss every single time. So if you take the advice that I'm about to show you, I promise that you can correct this very quickly. You're going to pretend that there's a laser beam in the center of your chest. And wherever this laser is pointing at contact point, that's where your ball's going to end up. Okay. So you go to the shot, you get your body through first, and then we've got our swing, the arms along for the ride and it comes through after. But here's the thing. You can't just have your chest pointing while you're hitting the ball. It needs to stay there after as well. So you're most likely doing this. You're hitting and you keep going even after you've hit the ball. But what this is doing is actually dragging your body momentum to go that way. And if your racket is ever so slightly off, even a few centimeters, it makes a pretty big difference of where the ball ends up. And because on the forehand for a right-handed player, you know, we finish with the racket here, a lot of people drag their chest that way. And they finish for one, off balance, and two, just completely off track of where they should have just stayed with the chest. So if I want to hit on a straight line, watch my chest. Watch my laser beam as well, okay? It's right here. Boom. You see what I did there? I got through the swing with my body, but once my chest got to where I wanted to hit on a straight line, I let the arm keep going, kind of just flowing with my momentum. Now I'm not forcing the arm to keep going. It's just because it's so loose and I've twisted my hips, my toes, my chest into the shot so fast that that's just going with my momentum, right? We throw the arm like a whip. Now, Here's the other thing that's causing you to miss wide. You are snapping your wrist. You're either snapping it to try and get top spin, or you're just doing it by mistake. Maybe you don't even realize it. And from the side, it looks like this. Boom. And you know, you're swinging so fast. If you even miscalculate your wrist snap by one half a second, that's one or half a second too long. And now you've pointed your strings off the court and it's going to hit the fence, the side fence every single time. Okay. You're going to slug people. If you're playing in public courts, you're going to hit people walking their dogs. You're going to hit little kids riding on scooters. No, 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 seriously. Okay. But jokes aside, you want to keep your wrist back, but we're not forcing the wrist back in this position. What you want to do is get lag on your forehand and I'll quickly kind of show you how to do this. When you turn, pat the dog at the height of the ball, okay? If the ball's low, turn low, pat the dog. If it's high, turn high, pat the dog. If it's at your hips, turn at your hips and pat the dog. And from here, go with the body nice and loose. And if you throw everything, make sure your elbow's not too close to your body. Throw your toes, your hips, and your chest into the shot and let your arm kind of fly behind you as dead weight. And what you're gonna do is just feel the racket catch up to you. And once it does, your wrist is gonna naturally fall back in this position and it's gonna catch the racket, okay? And the butt of your racket will kind of just be coming through towards the shot, but we're not forcing it, right? A lot of coaches teach players to drive the flashlight point the butt of the racket to the ball. This is actually terrible advice, okay? And I don't recommend you to approach it this way. Just drive the body first and don't even feel like you try with the arm, okay? And from here, the racket will catch the wrist. You don't have to force it. It will just happen if you get the pat the dog position, I promise you, okay? You go with the body and then from here, how you're going to get top spin instead of using your lower arm and your wrist 
you're going to roll your shoulder over the ball instead and do what I call a windshield wiper finish. And how that looks is like this. Your arm is out, it's fully extended, it's loose and relaxed, the wrist is back, and you are doing a windshield wiper action. Roll the shoulder over the ball. This is much more efficient, and it also allows you to hit through the ball more and get way more power as well, because you're kind of hitting through this imaginary pane, glass wall, brick wall, whatever you want to call it, you smash through the wall and then turn it over. And this is what all the pros do. This is how all the professional players hit, okay? You don't want to try and wrist it, try and flick it. You know, I've gotten a lot of badminton players over the years who end up just, you know, in my lessons, taking lessons with me. And they're the most notorious for this, snapping the wrist, snapping the wrist. It's not how you want to approach this shot, okay? From the side, windshield wiper looks like this, okay? And make sure you're not finishing too high over your shoulder because your momentum is going this way. And by finishing high, you're pulling out your kinetic energy kind of from this road that you're going down, okay? So you wanna stay within this realm that your body weight is shifting through, okay? So, Good luck with implementing these techniques. I hope that made a difference. I hope you stop missing your forehand wide. I'm almost certain that you will after watching this. I mean, these are really, really important things and they make a huge difference. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and do me a favor, like and subscribe for more educational tennis videos. Ciao. If you're starting tennis later in life and you don't have a system, you're going to fail more and you're not going to get what you want on the court. You can continue paying top dollar for tennis lessons and by the end, all you've really gotten is a bit of exercise. You've maybe run around, they've set up a few obstacles and if you ask for any specific advice, the coach will change the subject. This is because most coaches don't actually have a system. They are essentially making things up on the spot. I share the most important information in a fast course that you can copy for success. If you can learn it and use it and take the actions that I recommend, you can make more shots, play with whoever you want, and enjoy tennis for the rest of your life. The link is down below. Ciao.